Hello, I'm Dr Ian Beasley. I work at Aspatar. I'm a sports medicine physician at the hospital. In this video, I'll try to answer some of the big questions you have about what hot, hot topic is at the moment um, about a collapse on the field of play, um, as you may have seen on the television yesterday. So a sudden cardiac arrest is, is an umbrella term really, but it, it's a collapse due to the heart not functioning properly. And there are lots of reasons the heart might stop functioning properly suddenly. But usually it's to do with an electrical fault within the heart. Um, and the fault may be obvious and it may not be obvious. It may have been detectable, it may not have been detectable, but it happens suddenly. And obviously if the heart stops working properly, the whole body stops working properly and the player then collapses. And that's what sudden cardiac arrest is. The heart stops working suddenly and no one really understands why at the time, but uh, the player collapses. Obviously all athletes are, are susceptible to this, uh, but if you look worldwide at populations, black athletes that play basketball in America are the most affected. Fortunately, it's very rare no matter who you are. No, I don't think that, that there's much in the literature that says one sport is much more affected than any other sport. Um, I think it happens in all sports. Uh, and across age groups. Um, it's something you've just got to be diligent about, but as I said, unfortunately, it's very, very rare. That's a good question, and uh, again, and I, and I think that you can't prevent it. I think that's the most important thing. What you can do is you can mitigate risk. In other words, we all know that playing sport is a risky business. You, know, you may have a severe head injury, you may have a sudden cardiac arrest, you may break your leg, you may have an anterior cruciate ligament injury, but we can mitigate some of that risk and as far as uh, sudden cardiac arrest goes, you mitigate it by screening and trying to find out if someone's more susceptible. So moving on to athlete screening, we screen all our athletes in Qatar at Aspatar, as you will all know. Um, this is a very important service and we screen them pretty comprehensively and we include a musculoskeletal screen, in other words, we examine from head to toe your musculoskeletal system. Um, cardiac screening is obviously a very big part of that. We screen, uh, we do a dental screen, and we just make sure that the, and, and a blood screen, sorry. So we do all these things and we make sure the athlete has the best chance of achieving their best performance. And that's our job in life. As far as the cardiac screening goes, it's obviously a big part of this. You know, if you have a, if you have a knee that's a bit swollen and maybe a bit troublesome, you know, then we can probably sort that out, but that's not going to be a fatal issue. If you have a, um, something wrong with your heart, that can be fatal. So obviously cardiac screening is pivotal to the screening process here at Aspartar. So I think the first thing is, is, that, is recognition. You have to recognise what happened. It's often difficult when you're sitting on the bench because you're level with the pitch and you often don't see everything. There's players in the way. The, the camera angle vantage yesterday was easy for me to see exactly what it was. And it, it's obvious to all of us in the sports med department what was going on from the first second. It's not so easy for the medical team. And they've got to get there. Easy for me to sit on the settee and talk about this. The medical team have got to get there. I think the players and the referee understood it was a serious thing straight away. They're pretty experienced. These players are experienced. They know what's important and what's significant and what isn't. Same with the referee. Once the medical team get there, they make an assessment. Is the patient breathing? Is their airway clear? Have they got a pulse? Have they, is their heart working? If um, they're not breathing, although their airway's okay as far as they can make out, and the heart isn't working, then you start CPR straight away. And the players are very good at shielding that because that's quite a distressing thing for anyone to see. It's distressing for me to see yesterday and I've seen it loads of times. So I think that you know, the players did very well shielding um, what was going on from the crowd. You could see that you know, they were putting a, a defibrillator on and shocking him. You could see all this on the, on the streaming as it was coming through. That's how you do it. You get there, you recognise and you act. And as soon as a player goes down, my first feeling is if I'm sitting on the bench, is it a cardiac arrest or not? In fact, in other words, is this, could this be a potentially fatal issue or not, or not? And if it is, then you go, it's automatic, you go through the motions of knowing exactly what to do. And it is straightforward and we get loads of training. 
I think it's really, really important to make sure that we're all trained properly within pitch side care. In other words, what to do if something like this happens when you're standing by a football pitch or sitting on the bench at a, a, a game and this sort of thing happens. Fortunately here in Aspital we have a national sports medicine program and, and that affords education for medical staff, coaching staff, the public and playing staff. Um, and you could see from yesterday, the players actually know about a lot of this stuff because they acted in the right way. So it's a pan education. It's not just about medical staff. It's about making sure that everybody understands what's going on. And so that, you know, the person like me sitting in the stand watching a game on a Saturday afternoon in the UK, I have, you know, I ought to know what's going on. I ought to understand what to do. Most people should understand how to resuscitate someone if they drop dead in the street. We should all know that stuff and there's no reason why we can't. Unfortunately here in Aspital we do have a National Sports Medicine programme that affords education to all of us. Yeah, another good question because they were talking about that on the TV yesterday and I'm thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, well, let's make sure it's okay first, then we'll, then we'll talk about that. I think that what you do in this sort of incident is you sit down with the experts in cardiology and your family and you make a decision based on that. Your agent and your club will help you. It's, you know, the experts in cardiology and your family, they're the people that help you make that decision. And they're the ones that will help you to either carry on or retire, depending on what the decision is. It's a shared decision. It's not just, I think I'll go out and play.